Jesus name. Father Lord, we thank you once again. You exalt and honor you because of who you are. You are the ancient of it, the important and the science God. The one and the only wise God. Beside you there is no God for Outside you there is no sin. You walk, none can hinder it. You decree, none have the power to let it. Father Lord, that's why today we have gathered together again to exalt your name, to celebrate your presence. Lord, dwell in the midst of us. Holy Spirit, no man can do anything except it is given to him from above. Release your authority into our midst tonight. Teach us your word. Make known to us your path. Show us the things you want us to learn today. And open our eyes, not to preach from self, but to listen to what you have to teach us. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, as many that come today with a heart of expectation, Lord, their expectation will not be disappointed. Because you say the expectation of the righteous will not be cut off. Lord, their expectation will never be cut off today in Jesus' name. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Brethren, you are welcome again to Open Heart Fellowship. Open Heart Fellowship is the service of CGF Mission, and our service is Tuesday by 7 p.m., where we use the opportunity to prepare would be missionary and Christians who want to be introduced into the mission. So, Open Heart Fellowship. It is most service for every believer, both the believer that are just coming to the Lord for the first time and those who are mature Christian preparing to join the mission. This service is for everyone and it is a non-denominational service, so where we use opportunity to prepare people who want to serve the Lord by ministering to others and by sharing the gospel to the farthest part of the earth. So today, we are looking into another wonderful topic, which is science and wonder. Science and wonder. Today, I will be your minister. My name is Missionary Collins. I am going to be ministering with you tonight, showing you the mystery of science and wonder, and whether it is possible today whether it's only possible when Christ did it or is it possible today? If it is possible, why is it not eminent in many churches? Why does people not believe? When miracles happen in churches, why is it impossible for believers to believe that God could do miracle in the day of Christ? That today it's also possible for him to repeat exactly the same miracle. And that is what we are going to be looking into today. And with short hours, I'm going to be teaching. Our text today is going to be taken from the book of Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter 33. Exodus 33 from verse 12 to 23 and out of Apostle chapter 8. We, our, our teachings is going to be split into various topics. First, we are going to be looking at Emmanuel. After an Old Testament age of abundant signs and wonders came the birth of a Savior. And before the birth came, he was herald in a prophetic word by God asking him, a king to ask him for a sign. He should make the sign as deep as hell and make it as high as heaven. And the man asked himself, I will not ask God for a sign, I will not test the Lord. And the Lord said to the king, you wear out many patients. Will you also wear out the patient of God? You wear out men's patient. 
Will you also wear the patience out the patience of God? Since you will not ask for a sign, the Lord himself will give you a sign. A virgin shall be with the child, and you shall give his name, call his name Emmanuel. And that being interpreted, God living with us. God living with us, or God with us. And that is the meaning of Emmanuel. You know, I've had many ministers write a sermon how Jesus Christ cannot be the Son of God or cannot be God. But the prophecy that proceeds from the Father already said he is. That his name is Emmanuel, which be interpreted God with us. So, I believe if you have any doubt on, based on those circumstances, that should clear out your doubts. But today, let me not waste time on it. What am I going to teach you today? We start by reading Exodus chapter 33, verse 12. Moses said unto the Lord, See that thou sayest unto me, Bring up these people. And thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by thy name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. This is Moses. Every man that God called, I have never seen a man that God called and willingly run for it. Because when God called you, he never leave you a choice. If many of us had choice, we would choose to do something else. Because when God called you, you don't have option. And here is a man. God said to him, I have seen the affliction of my people in Egypt, and I'm sending you as a liberator to go and set the captive free. But what did Moses say to God? You have been talking, but you never told me who you are sending with me. This journey is so big for us. I cannot go alone. I remember in my case, when the Lord said to me, find out the people that are out. The first question I asked God was, how do I find them out? In the case of Moses, was who will you send with me? I have never seen such through the scripture. Even Jeremiah said, I am a child, how can I speak? Until the Lord has to explain to him, he should not say he was a child. There is nobody that God laid the mantle upon that feel that the mantle is not too heavy for him to bear. It's not an act of disobedience. It's a natural human instinct that comes with God's call. And one mistake men always keep making I remember when I was called into the mission, my first plan was that I would have to work very hard, raise enough income so that I would be able to take care of every missionary or every person I would meet in the field. That was a big mistake. Because one mistake we always made as Christians is that we are not called as sheep sent in the midst of sheep. We are called as sheep sent in the midst of wolves. The wolves out there will never let you be able to gather enough resource that you will need for the work of the ministry. Because Lucifer is still the God of this world. Though we have dominion and strength to claim it over him, at the beginning of your call, you do not arrive at the apex of your dominion from the first day you are called. Because of that, you are, when you are in charge, even the Bible makes it clearer that when you are in charge, you were under tutors and governor until the time appointed of the Father. In every call and decision, 
There is a time appointed to the Father. Jesus makes the gift of miracle very simple to us. In the parable of the talent, you need to understand as Christians, every believer that God created on earth has a talent. And that talent God has given is inbuilt in you. For example, some people can just pick up microphone and sing whatever song they want to sing without needing to be taught. It is inborn in them. That is a talent that God has given to you. And if you use it for the glory and for the purpose why God gave you, that song will transform millions of lives. Some is teaching. They are born teachers. When they pick up my before, they teach with excellent skills, even better than professors. If you use that teaching gift perfectly well, you can end up being a disciple or even an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, who will then in turn crown you with the raised gift of the church for the embodiment of the ministry. I see many Christians keep asking for gifts. Some are fasting for 100 days, asking God for a particular vision. Why this is good? They fail to understand to whom much is given, much more is expected. The higher you go, the more the burden you are to carry. If you want a stadium feel, you must prepare for the number of usher to conduct the stadium. And you must prepare enough finance to prepare the art that people will see to welcome them to the stadium. And you must have enough disciples to be able to tut up those stadium so that they will not be lost and they will not end up like people coming to see vision and at the end of the day there is no transformation that is why this topic signs and wonders is important every believer that god called into the feet has the ability to perform signs and wonders every single one of them some people will say but i'm not a pastor you don't need to be a pastor God said, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. He said, as many that obey and go, these signs will follow them. If you believe that God sent you to do this work I just said, and you obey it with confidence and you go, signs and wonders must follow you. There is no two ways about it. You don't need special anointing. As long as you obey the voice of Jesus Christ, signs will follow you if you believe. That is for every believer that go out. There are people specially give, given the gift of miracle worker, the gift of evangelism, the gift of pastorship, and various gifts of healing, prophecy. But these gifts automatically follow you if you obey the voice of the Lord and you are saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, born again, and you go in obedience to the word of God to go and save the lost. When you come in contact with the fourth sick person, God is not going to leave you empty-handed with the sick person. He's going to send his word, and his word will heal them from their disease. He's going to send his word to a demon process, and the word of God will cast out that devil. Because many Christians believe that when they go out, it is them. When you feel that you are the one who will perform miracle, miracle can never happen. 
Because any time you say I, God will leave it for you. Because He is a jealous God. But when He says, God do this, He will do it. Because you are just a servant. An ambassador does not represent himself. An ambassador represents the country who sent him. The moment you decide to take the matter of God in peace and go into the mission field, automatically you become heaven's ambassador. And that was what Moses failed to realize in this verse 12. And says unto the Lord, See that thou sayest unto me, Bring up the people. Thou hast not let me know whom you will send with me. Moses was thinking, we are not talking of 20 people here. We are talking of over 1 million people. You are telling me to bring them out as if they are one man. Who will you send with me? It is not faithlessness. It is human instinct. Human instinct, when it saw, an open saw is in the leg, cannot believe that saw can disappear when covered with it. Simple anchor shift and prayer. No. He feels, I'm talking of reality here. We need some surgery. We need to skin graft some parts of the soil just to cover it up. That is what human instincts will tell you. But what does God's instincts tell you? The righteous man that is of faith does not say, Who oh, will go to heaven and bring that miracle or that blessing down? Or who will descend into hell to raise Christ up so that he can come and perform this miracle? But what does this say to you? The word is in your mouth and it is closer to you than you think. The word of faith which we speak. All you need is speak the word and God will back you up. The word that we speak to you every Tuesday if it cannot solve the problem by which it is directed, no amount of prayer will solve that problem. Because no minister, some people will say, if I see the pastor, I believe he will heal you. The pastor has no power of his own to heal you. The power is in the word of God. The word is all you need. Commit your ways unto the Lord. And he will direct your paths. Need not upon them all understanding. In all thy way, acknowledge God. He would direct you on what to do. Brethren, now let's go to today's teaching. Today's teaching is signs and wonder. Have you noticed how quickly the early church grew? In quantity and in quality. They did not only grow in quantity, but they grow in quality. First, quality, prayers, and decision making. Quantity of about 3,000 believers in Acts chapter 2. Life, quality lifestyle in Acts chapter 2, verse 42 to 47. Quantity of about 5,000 men, probably 15,000 in total believer, by Acts chapter 4, verse 4. Quantity community, Acts chapter 4, verse 23, 5 to, to 5, chapter 5 to 11. Quantity increase by Acts 5, verse 14. Quality leadership, Acts 6, verse 1 to 6. Let's read Acts 6, verse 1 to 6. Acts 6, verse 1 to 6. Let's study why they get quality leadership. Why is it almost impossible for today churches to have quality leadership? 6 verse 1 to 6 
And in those days, when the number of disciples were multiplied, there arose murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrew, because their widow were neglected in the daily ministration. Seven. Then the, seven, the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto themselves and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and set table. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among yourself, among you seven men of honest reports, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom ye may appoint over this business. It is not reasonable for we to leave the word of God and serve table. And there is a reason why I took this place. Today, we have Christians that have abandoned the reason why the church was set and they begin to serve table. Food, money, glory. They measure the growth of their church with the number of leaves in the tree and by the number of seats every Sunday. Rather, by the number of missionaries out there in the open field, preaching the word of God, showing kindness and salvation to many. But the word of God is no longer measured by the virtue of the people and the leaders who put God first before everything else. Who spoke the truth in respecting of shame, pain, disgrace, humility. But they measure their leadership based on the number of tithes and offering that comes into the church. No. All these are good. They are simple that your church are growing, but they are not the primary goal. Don't mistake the blessing of a child to marriage. Child is a fruit in marriage. It's not the purpose of marriage. Marriage is for companionship. The Lord said, it is not right for a man to be alone. And I will give him a head meet for him. He didn't say I will give him a child. So the only reason why I create woman is for you to become a child bearing to sin. And the day you cease bearing child, you no longer exist in the life of the man. No. God created her first to become a partner, a helpmate. They can sit down and reason together. They both can lie down and are naked and are not ashamed. That is your purpose. The first purpose of the church is to make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Every other thing are just blessing of fruits that are added to you while you do the honorable thing. If you focus on the leaves, you may never have a soul to present to God on the last day. A lot of us has worked hard, but we still do not have one soul that we can boast of in heaven and say, Father, indeed, this is whom I am taking from the earth to present to you on the last day. Remember what the Bible said, they that turn many to righteousness shall shine forth like the brightness of the star forever. Turn many to righteousness. That is the purpose of the church. The church does not exist to build cathedral or to showcase their estate or their private jet or their cars. No. The church exists. All these things are blessings. They are good. But they are not the purpose of the church. Don't forget 
the purpose why God built his church. The first reason was to go and preach the good news to every creature. Even Jesus Christ applied his ministry. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good tidings to the meek, to proclaim liberty to the captive, and to preach recovering of sight to the blind. But today, the church is no longer preaching recovering of sight to those who are blinded by the darkness and the evil of this world. Right than the church is telling the people they don't need to be saved as long as you keep bringing money. The money will not save them. Their money will not go to the heaven on their behalf. Remember why Christ talked with the Pharisees. He said, oh, you hypocrites. You tithe meat, anise, and comet. The feed, the fruit of the feed. But you forgot the weightier matter of the law, which is justice, truth, and equity. This you ought to have tithed first, before thinking about the fruit of the feed. The fruits of the field are good for tithes, but that is not the purpose. The purpose is to tithe love, tithe peace, tithe righteousness and truth in your church. Then every other blessing, remember what Christ teaches us. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Every other thing will be added unto you. No wonder the early church grows not just in quantity, but in quality. And their lifestyles was also quality. Because the only really things that makes us a Christian is not our service. It is our lifestyle. Others must see Jesus in you. Even while you are going through a world of sin, your life should be a book before their eye. While they read you true and true, they must be able to tell if your lifestyle can point them to God. They must be able to follow your footsteps. Some people wonder, why do I just keep praying and God does not answer? God answers prayer. The only reason why your prayer may not be hindered may be hindered is because you need your prayer to go to heaven to bring God down to the earth or to descend into hell to raise Christ up from the grave and rather than speaking the word that is in your mouth the word of faith which we preach that is all you need you does not need to ascend to heaven for your prayer to be answered you don't need to descend into hell, Ella. You need to speak the word. The word which we speak is all you need. Quality grow in Acts chapter 6, verse 1 to 7. They grow in quality. Why should that be an oppressed and unlearned people? Why should that be in an oppressed and unlearned people who were mostly fishermen and capital, task collector? One reason, what frequent signs and wonders from God? But are they for today? What was it happening in their days, not in our time, when we are more professor? Some people sleep with Bible. They can quote Genesis to Revelation. Before you say John, they tell you three sixteen. They know everything. They are ever learning, never coming to the knowledge of the truth, like James and Gabriel. These are hypocrites. They hold a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. When we talk about Emmanuel, God with us, after an Old Testament age of abundant signs and wonder, 
came the birth of our Savior, which laid the foundation of Christian movement that was about to be launched. The coming of Jesus was accompanied by signs, wonders, Hengel Harat, while the shepherd wore their sheep by night. Heaven opened. The angel was singing, praising God. He was born on a manger. The star came all the way from the east and they brought presents for him. The Lord spoke with a vision. Virgin gave birth to a child. Revelations, dreams, prophetic utterance, they all came to pass in one man. Which in today's terms is impossible. And the miracles, Luke's, Mark, his journey was heralded by miracle. Things that were never seen since the foundation of the earth. The dead came back to life. Leprous scream, lame walk, demons cast out. The blind eyes are open. The poor were fed. The people of God. What distinguished God people from everybody else on earth? Let me not say it with my mouth. Let's go to Exodus 33, verse 15. Exodus 33, verse 15. And let's see what distinguishes the children of God from ordinary believers. Exodus 33, verse 15. What makes you different from the unbeliever? What makes you different from the people that worship idol? I read. And he said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. The presence of God. That is all that makes the difference. It is the presence of God that makes an unskilled man an excellent teacher. It is the presence of God that makes a shy person preach Jesus in an open street. It is the presence of God that makes the paralyzed walk, run up from his seat and begin to walk. It is the presence of God that makes the leper clean. It is the presence of God that breaths of life can enter the dead and they wake up. Without the presence of God, you can do nothing. And how do you dwell in his presence? Constantly. Or are you going to tell the sick, hold on, I was in the presence of God when I did those miracles yesterday, but today I'm out of His presence. When I go back to the presence of God, I'll come and heal you. Just wait for me. I will pray for you after I have fasted for 40 days. I will come back to the presence of God and heal you there. Is that what you are going to say to the sick man who is expecting you? To call upon your God. I remember when I want to go my first crusade. The first thing they asked me. When we come, will we see sign? The people in the world are hungry for sign. Every generation on earth is seek for a sign. Even the Jews asked Jesus, what sign will, we, will you show us that we may believe? Tell them, come and see. Don't shut down anybody that say we will see sign if we come to your conference. Don't promise them anything. Tell them come and see. And God will not disappoint them. Because the sign is not coming from you. It's coming from God. They are not asking you we will see sign. They are asking God. And so when they ask you the question, take it back to God. And when you get home, say, Father, they say they want to see sign. Let your sign fall. And you will see God in wonder. And it was the presence of God with us 
making us by nature supernatural people. When Jacob was about to leave the camps of the enemy, because his children committed murder, the enemy sought to slay them. The Lord sent quick because of his presence upon Jacob. Nobody dare lift up a hand against them. The presence of the Lord shaded them and he took them. Even before Esau, his brother. So the presence of God has moved. We have an example on cutting throughout the scripture. The presence of God is what makes a man stand firm in the midst of burning fire and not be afraid. If you are dwelling in the presence of the Lord, you will stop the lion's mouth. You will stop the violent fire. You will walk through the sea. The water will not overwhelm you. But how can one of you ask yourself a common question? How can one of single man chase a thousand people? And two men put ten thousand to flight. How is this possible? If not the presence of God, can one man chase a thousand? Can 300 men chase 1 million? Gideon and his 3,000 men chase an army as the multitude of sand in the seashore. And they fled. 300 men. The presence of God. More than our natural learning, we live by revelational knowledge. But every word that comes from the mouth of God, supernatural provision and divine intervention in life, mighty for four. Why do we need all this? What did Jesus do? Miracles of healing. Nobleman's son in John 4, verse 46. Peter mother in law healed of fever. Matthew 8, verse 14. Cleansing the leper. Matthew 8, verse 3. The paralytic. Matthew 9, verse 2. More miracles of healing. The important man was healed. John, 50, John 5, 5. The withered hand. Matthew 12, verse 10. The centurion servant. Matthew 8 verse 5, the issue of blood, Matthew 9 verse 20, blind men, Matthew 9 verse 27, Marcos healed, Luke 22 verse 51, daughter of Sapphonicia, Matthew 16 verse 22, death and dumb healed, Mark 7 verse 33, blind men, Matthew 20, verse 30. Mark 10, verse 46. 8, verse 23. John 9, verse 1. 10 lepers. Luke 17, verse 12. And a woman with a spirit of infirmity. Luke 13, verse 11. A man with drowsy men. With drowsy. Luke 14, verse 2. All this happened. Jesus did it. And he said, Greater things than this shall you do. And the question tonight you must ask yourself before you sleep Is Christ a liar? If he does all this, why am I not doing it? Why am I not seeing signs happening in my life? Fear. Fear. I remember the first time I want to pray for the sick in the hospital. On reaching there, the first thing the devil told me was, look, if you pray, what of if it doesn't get well? Oh, uh, don't just waste your prayer. Keep it for another day. At that point in time, you need to remind the devil you are not the one to do the work. 
You ask God to send his word. And God will indeed send his word. And when he sends his word, his word can heal any disease. We know some. Luke 7, verse 11. Jairus' daughter. Matthew 9, verse 18. Lazarus raised after four days in the grave. John 11, verse 1 to 44. His own resurrection, he raised himself up from the grave. Luke 24, verse 6. John 10, verse 18. Miracle of deliverance. Demonics being cast out. Matthew 12, verse 22. 8, verse 28. 9, verse 32. Mark 12, verse 6. Lunatic charge. Matthew 17, verse 14. Miracle over nature. The temperate still. Matthew 8, verse 26. Waiting on this, walking on the sea. Matthew 14, verse 25. Cursing the fish tree. Matthew 21, verse 19. Appearing to his disciple after his death. Now, let's come to one in our modern day. Oh, somebody will say this happened in the Bible, but it's no longer possible now. Is that true? I have seen in my few years of ministry, somebody that was stoned for more than 15 years grow in one week. I have seen in my short years in ministry, demons cast out. I have seen the sick healed. Women barren get children in my short terms in ministry. So they are still happening today. And it can still happen in your ministry if you only believe. I remember Peter and the rest of the disciples. When a man with the Lunatic came to Jesus and he said, My son is Lunatic. I brought him to your disciple. They could not cure him. Jesus said, bring him to me. Bring him to me. Who is Jesus saying bring? A lunatic charge. In Matthew 17, verse 14. Let's read. Matthew 17, verse 14. Matthew 17, verse 14. Verse 14. He said, A boy, and when they were come, in, I read from verse 12. Now I say to you that Elijah has come already, and they did not know him, but did to him whatever they wish. Likewise, the Son of Man is also about to suffer at their hands. Then the disciple understood that he spoke unto them of John the Baptist. In verse 14, And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him, saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and so vexed. Often time he falleth into the fire, and often into the water. I brought him to thy disciple. They could not cure him. So, there were miracles the disciple could not do. And look at what Jesus said, why they could not do it. Is it because some miracle have great? Or some miracle are just beyond you? No. And Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and preserved generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him. He talked to me. Who is Jesus saying? Lunatics. Man. Man. He said, bring him. Bring him to me. What about you? How many times have you passed through the streets? Somebody ran to you and said, my brother had just gone walk up. And you said, bring him to me. Or someone just wrong to you. 
said one of my doctors just caught an incurable disease and you say bring him to me if Jesus can do it you can do it if you are a child of God and you believe in God all things are possible not some things not some few things everything in this world are possible to him that believeth and look at what Jesus said oh faithless generation because people today they believe what they see when you speak to them spiritual things they want to, you to speak about physical cash something they can handle something they can touch things that appear they are temporal but things you do not see they last forever and Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of him and the child was cured that very hour then came the disciple unto Jesus apart and said why could we not why could not we cast him out today many Christians come to you why can't we do the same wonders and miracles that follow your ministry Jesus answered is the same answer I have for you Jesus said to them because of your own belief because you doubt in your heart because you doubt in your heart i will tell you a parable that my grandfather usually tell me when i was a child and he said one day his mom was suffering rolling with battle and he got to a rich man door and he looked at the man on top of his castle he never knew the man was in the window listening to him he said to himself what manner of work did this man do? That is staying in the castle. Me, I have rolled with battle all my life. I cannot even afford food, not to talk of building one room for myself. And the man heard him. The man said, we should bring him upstairs. And he bring him upstairs. And he put before him a chariot and a horse. And said to the man, this chariot can carry all the load you carry for one week, just in one movement. But, I will give you this horse and this child on one condition. Just say, Our Father, who are together. Finish it, you will have this child and this horse. The man said, Just our Father. I said, Yes. He said, Okay. Say it, Our Father, who are together. And Lord be thy name, thy kingdom come. Are you sure you will really give me the child? The man said, You just lost it. Why didn't you have patience to the end and see if God would not give it to you? The same thing happened to Christians when they pray. Instead of believing God from the beginning to the end, they believe God halfway and they doubt. As a result, they could not do anything. Remember, the work that works in you. It's according to the measure of the faith you have. If your faith is small, your work will be small. If your faith is big, your work will be bigger. I remember when we started this mission, I called the team together. I said, let us sponsor the work of the Lord. Many doubted. We are not going to put our income. I said something to them. I said, if you do not sponsor this work, I will sponsor the work alone and the Lord will give me the work that is meant for all of you and I will use it to sponsor his work. And they thought it was a joke. Before God started bringing people with a single hand, they sponsored the mission for more than eight years. Because the Lord, I may not have more than enough, but the Lord always provides for his work. That is one thing many Christians face to understand. The miracle of provision are possible. The miracle of healings are still possible. The miracles of deliverance still take place today. You don't need any magician to give you some spell. If the devil give you the ability to perform miracle, who will take the glory? If the devil build a church for you, or the wicked build a church for you, who do you think you will worship there? Is it God? No, you worship the devil there. So if Jesus could do this, 
And he said to the, the disciple, asked, Why did we not, were we not able? And he said, Because of your unbelief. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if you shall have faith, not big faith, as grain of a mustard seed. Mustard seed is smaller than a grain of rice. And if you can have faith as small as that, you will say to the mountain, be removed. Hence, to yonder place, and it shall be removed. And nothing shall be impossible for you. Nothing. Causes will be broken. Chains will be taken away. Nothing will be impossible for you. The reason why things are impossible is because you pray a lot or you have no faith. And most times when you pray, you ask God to do your way. Miracle over nature. The tempest are still mighty. Matthew 28 verse 26. Walking on the sea. Matthew 14 verse 25. Cursing of the fish tree. Matthew 21 verse 19. Appearing to his disciples after death. Miracles of provision. Water changed to wine. John 2 verse 9. Catches of fish. Luke 5 verse 8. John 21 verse 6. Feeding 5,000. 4,000. Matthew 14 verse 15. 15 verse 32. Pass money. Matthew 17 verse 24. All these, why did I list them for you? I want you to take time to study this miracle and ask God, why am I not doing it today? And present it to God. Say, God, I want to obey you and go according to what Christ promised in the Great Commission. And I want this sign to follow me. Just watch. God honor his word even more than his name. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, forever. Hebrew 13 verse 8. Acts of God. The book of Acts of the Apostle is God's test book of the church to show us the normal Christian lifestyle. Acts has 28 chapter. In every one of them, you will find supernatural signs and wonder, the event taking place, and the process that bring about those events. You want supernatural, you want signs and wonders in your church? Read out of Apostle. Practice it and see if you will not get the same results. Don't end up like the man I just told you about. Who paused halfway and began to ask questions about his eyes was more on the gift rather than the prayer. So many of us, when we go before God in prayer, our eyes is not on God, our eyes is in our request. As a result, you will never get it. That's what Jesus said: do not seek for bread that perish. He said, you are not seeking for me because you want to hear the word of God. You came because you ate the bread and you were filled. Labor not for bread that perish. Christian, today, I have the same word of advice for you. Don't labor for food that will perish. They are audible words from God. Prophecies, new language, dreams, visions, trance. People choosing to believe. There are healings. Deliverance, fitting of holiness, awesome divine judgments, abundant signs and wonders. This is normal Christian life, not the extraordinary, the weird or strange of many think of it today. Letter tells the story. Paul learned heavily upon signs and wonders. In Romans 15, verse 17 to 20, Galatians 3, verse 5, 2 Timothy 4, verse 17, Hebrews 2, verse 4, in another place, testimonies, Peter's 
did evil war wonders. It, it comes to a point that when Peter is going along the road, people bring their sick. Perhaps the shadow of Peter will fall upon them that their sick will be healed. Only the shadow of a man. I will tell you, it's not possible today. God granted special sign to be wrought by the hand of Paul because he obeyed the God's voice and went for the Great Commission. Paul was not a miracle worker when he was converted. Paul was a sinner. He was a persecutor of the church when God called him. If a persecutor of the church, God granted to him to perform special signs, what about you? What a miracle for? Miracle and not for circus. An act of arose and astonishment to show people I have arrived. No. Not a day to promote the persons God uses. Neither are they magics. Oh yeah, see my leg. They say they perform wonder. See this leg is cut off. Tell God to join it. No. Miracles happen from faith from both the giver and the receiver. Without the two faith meeting, it will never work. No matter how good your prayer is, if the person you are praying for doesn't want to be healed, even bring the best miracle worker on earth, that miracle will never happen. Because there are limits. There must be a signal in the heart. Watch throughout the scripture. Everybody that got healed, there is, he perceived there is faith in the person to be healed. The person first and foremost believes that God is able to do this. And if he doesn't believe that God is able to do it, there is no amount of prayer you pray that will work. And the person must be ready to obey to the last. I remember when I met a barren woman in Germany, who when she cried, God deliberately wanted to test her faith. I said to her, I'm going to the immigration. Your case is not serious. So what is serious, more serious is I'm going to the immigration office if you follow me. And she said, I will go with you. Only after you finish, you will pray for me. I said, okay. And she really followed me. When I saw she had faith to be healed, it just took five minutes prayer. And after that, that very month, God did it in his life. That one month, she was one month pregnant. After more than five years of marriage. Why am I telling you this? It's because God still works miracles for those who can dare to believe. Christians who can dare to believe and cast away the spirit of that from their hearts, God can still do it. But if you cannot believe, no prayer will save you. I'm sorry. How to prepare the way for miracle? First, don't forget to ask Jesus to do today exactly what he did yesterday. Confirming his work with signs following, whether instantly or in due course. In James chapter 4, verse 2. Hebrews 13, verse 8. Remember the three peace to bring power. Praise God always. Preaching the gospel, prayer. These three P's work. I have tried it and it works. Praise, preaching, and prayer. Like the disciple, go everywhere. Ask the Lord to walk with you, and you will never come home empty. Everyone Christ sent out, they return with joy, saying, Even the devil was subject to us. Today, if you will listen to my word, the devil will be subject to you in Jesus' name. And all power in heaven and on earth and under the earth has been given unto Christ. Go and preach the gospel to every creature. 
as you go, these signs you follow them that believe. In my name, Jesus said, they will cast out the devil, heal all manner of disease. Take the serpent by the hand, he cannot hold them. Eat poisonous food, drink deadly water, tread upon all the weapons of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. This science is not promised by me. The Lord Jesus made this promise. And we know he's a covenant keeping God. He keeps his word. When he says it, he will do it. If you believe it, you will receive it. The baptism of fire is still possible. You can still receive the grace to do exceedingly above all you can think or imagine. The Lord can do exceedingly above anything you can think of in your mind or even imagine. God can do all of it. But when this is where we conclude our teaching for tonight. I will want to see you again by Sunday next this Sunday on Saturday night we will be having a short teaching about CGF online you just want teaching if you want to know more about Christian Global Foundation our website will be taking you inside the website viewing all the content and you will not see my video I'm sorry but you will be seeing all the content and we will show you how to assess it, how to study with us, and how to become a missionary, how to fill out the questionnaire form, and if you have questions, how to send email and question back to us. God bless you as you participate. The time is 8 p.m. on Saturday evening. I would come online. It's going to be a live program. But if you miss it, you can always go to our website at cgfnslogin.app or go to our Facebook at CGF Open House Fellowship. CGF Open House Fellowship. And on Facebook, YouTube, and so on, you can get us there and listen to our past messages. These teachings are in series, and they are in series of four. And after four, we finish that four series, we're going to start another four series. So each topic is in series of four. So if you miss any of the past series, you can still get the message on our website at cgfnslogin.app. cgfnslogin.app. If you enjoy our message, you can send us email comments. If you have prayer requests, this Next week, Tuesday, is the last Tuesday of the month, is our Tarry Night. We call it Tarry Night because the night we pray for every believers and every Christians around the world and missionary, especially missionary who are serving in the field. And anybody that has special prayer requests can send it to our mail. Our email is below this video. You receive it at the end of this video. You can send us your prayer requests. We will pray along with you when the prayer starts by Tuesday. God bless you as you participate. Brethren, this is where we're going to conclude. Before I conclude, I would like to conclude with a word of prayer. I'm going to pray. And before I pray for you, I just want you to believe. Because if you believe, anything is possible. The word of God is quick and powerful. And it's sharper than any two sword. And it can divide asunder the intent of the heart. It can strike through bones and marrow. Brethren, the word of God is quick. The word of God is powerful. Tonight, God can send his word as he sent it into the, my life, into the life of millions of other people, and he healed them from their diseases. The Lord can see send his word into your life this evening. Brethren, the Lord is about to send his word to you right now. If you believe it, accept it, and grab it with your hands, and take it. The Bible says faith is the substance of things so far. The evidence of things not seen. But it, the elders, the men of old, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, me, and other missionaries, and other believers, receive good reports. 
they receive good reports. By it, they obtain good reports. Good report is not obtained by labor. It's not obtained by service. It's not obtained by humility. It's obtained by faith. So, brethren, if you want to obtain good reports today, believe. Believe in God and obtain that good report. And the Lord will give you your good report tonight. The Lord whom we said will give you your good reports. Just like the elders obtain theirs, you will obtain your own. And the God who can do exceedingly above anything you can ask, think, or even imagine. Tonight, he will bless your souls. He will speak to your heart. He will minister to your name. And he will meet you at the very point of your name. No matter whatever that need is. For as many that are sick, I decree you start healing. For as many that are looking for the foot of the womb, receive it by this time next year, carry your children. For as many that are in bondage, I set you loose from the captivity of the enemy. As many that sit in darkness, I say, let the light of God shine into your life. As many that are looking for financial assistance, O oh God of heaven, you are the provider. The Bible told me that silver and gold are the inhabitation of your throne. Lose your blessing upon as many that will believe from the heart. And that we are set to go and finish your work which you have sent us. Lord, let this sign follow them because they believe. In your name, they will cast the devil. They will heal all manner of disease. Lay their hand upon the sick and they will recover. For in Jesus' mighty name we will pray. Amen. Father Lord, I thank you because I know my prayer has been answered. I can boldly come to the throne of grace and ask God for help in time of need. Brethren, I will see you again on Sunday. The time is 5 p.m. where we study understanding prophecy. Last week, we started the part one of the bowl, but this week we are going to conclude the bowl judgment. And God help us by the Following Sunday, we will complete the millennials and the final showdown of events. God bless you as you participate. In Jesus' name, Amen. Brother, we will see you again by next week's Sunday. By this week's Sunday, the time is 5 p.m. Or you can check our website at cgfnslogin.app. God bless you as you participate. Amen.